So diagrams like this do offer benefit, but you should be cautioned that for agent-based and hybrid modeling, they're a very imperfect fit. So Jeff and I have worked over the years, sort of an on and off basis, um, but applied over in Australia, particularly in, a, um, uh, in its different forms in, um, in participatory ways, and applied in our context in, um, in uh, computational ways um, at, at uh, variants of these languages which we can use in the agent-based context. And we did come up with what I think are useful first steps, which build on the sorts of languages we see in any logic, but, um, but allow them to be used in a more qualitative way. So for example, here we have a, a diagram, which is an illustration of, a, of an agent. Um, and uh, this agent might be an agent class. Maybe we'll have one for for example, for doctors and another one for patients, or well, if one for dogs and another for the service veterans, for the veterans who are, who are being served by those dogs. And we can place aspects of the dynamics of that individual within the agent. We could place stocks and flows if we wanted to. We could place uh, states and state charts. We can place events. Oh, excuse me, if we could. We could place parameters which indicate characteristics of that person, for example, or that agent that are not changing quickly. And we can have, within the same diagram, several such agents. And we can populate it with, um, uh, with uh, particular components. We can also add in images, which might, for example, allow us to add in an image of a network associated with it. We can further add in aspects of these positive and negative causal loop um, linkages. And we might do that within an individual or in a way that links to an individual's characteristics but links them in with more global features. This is not a silver bullet. It's a work in progress. But this particular application is notable because it's accessible by many people simultaneously. So many people can log into this application just like Google Docs, they can type on a common Google Doc at the same time. Many people can use this at the same time to drag things around, to add things. And it allows a sort of participatory gathering of the model mapping process with a language used for qualitative modeling, for hybrid and, and uh, uh, qualitative modeling. So this is a tool which I'd be glad to um, you know, to help uh, people learn to use if there were interest with it. That actually dovetails quite nicely with, um, with what we're engaged in in the context of, uh, of any logic. It uses a lot of these any logic uh, features, uh, but does so in a way that, um, uh, that is amenable to qualitative modeling. So some people um, benefit from using this sort of tool, which can allow me to use it at the same time as you, et cetera, to, to build up a model. I can go, just like other Google Docs, I can go share this with you. You can go visit it and start adding it at the same time with me. Something that any logic could sorely need, sorely needs, but currently does not support. Okay? Um, so uh, this is a little bit where we're going. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage getting too tool-centric. A whiteboard and, or pieces of paper can do just as well to diagram these things. We don't have to privilege computational tools. Although when it comes to distance-based connections, if I'm doing something with Jeff over in Australia or with colleagues in the States, a tool like this can be useful because we have a shared experience. We have a shared canvas um, on which to create the things which we'd lack in the form of a whiteboard or a piece of paper. But if people are co-located, whiteboards and pieces of paper do great. So we're grappling here with what needs to go into a model, and sometimes, sometimes sketching it out at first in however rough a form can be, um, uh, can be useful 
before you get down to the nitty gritty task of, of building the model itself. Um, so, uh, you know, the quantitative model. So you might think about that, and if people were interested, I could, I could show them tomorrow uh, this tool. Um, I wanted to get a sense from those in the room, just to get a read of things. Um, of the people here, how many will be present for the Saturday session? Awesome. Okay, great. We'll have it well staffed. And uh, Jeff and I will be there to, to help facilitate things in a good way. Thank you for that feedback. It'll be a full day Work it, working on modeling. Um, I don't plan any lectures, although if I'm drafted into it by request to give a lecture on, on some topic, I'll, I, may, I may do so. But, but the, the default plan is to have the day overwhelmingly focused on building models, with food delivered and uh, facilitated by us. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I think those are all the comments I'd like to make today. Tomorrow we have GIS models we're going to be going through. We're going to be introducing the GIS environment, which provides some very powerful uh, capacity to for agents to be affected by the environment, to modify the environment, for example, um, and uh, to, uh, to engage in resource seeking within the environment. Um, uh, so we'll be talking about that. If you have a chance, see if you can bring your mouse tomorrow. Okay? Uh, bring along a mouse. If you're using these computers, there's a mouse there. You don't have to worry about it. But if you're bringing along your own computer, Try to bring a mouse so that you can behave in a more um, in a more gracile fashion. A more, or it, it'll be a little bit easier for you. But we'll build up some models and we'll build on some of the understanding that we got today because they'll be dynamic models. Okay. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for your patience. It's been a long day. I hope it's had some rewards for you, and I will look forward to seeing you at 8:30 tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.